Hallelujah. All right, so let's get into the word, the, the word of God today. So today I'm talking about the greatest gift of all. I'm sure, I, I want to believe you are generous people. I'm sure some of you have given some gifts out this season. Sure of us. Let me see. If you have given anybody a gift, raise your hand. Great. If you have received a gift, raise your hand. <laughs> you need more people in your life that can give you gifts. <laughs> Praise God. But Christmas is something that is always, you know, that connotes with a lot of gift giving. And why do you give gifts? You give gifts to someone you love. True or false? Do you give to someone you don't love? Even if you don't love the person, you love something the person can do for you. True or false? So if you just say, ah, I don't love my boss. Ah, but you love the favor he can give you. Praise God. So we give gifts to people that we love. Just, and why do we give them gifts? We give them gifts as a sign of appreciation. In fact, the gift you give and the size of the gift you give, it depends on how weighty that person is to you, true of us. So for some people, you just remove, just look for 1K. Just give them 1K. That's the weight they have to you. But for some people, you need to write a check. For some people, you need to go to one supermarket and go and buy something big. Why? The different gifts you give is dependent on the person and the weight you put on the value you get from the person. So, in this season, and you know, even for our parents, I know a lot of our parents there, and for those of us growing up, you know, Christmas clothes was very important. Praise God. That was what Christmas was about. Christmas clothes. And it was always very nice. You know, it's, we start planning for it from October. Because that Christmas clothes, we must wear it and go and sit on the Christmas lap. Praise God. So, Christmas is always about gift giving. But I permit to submit to you this morning that even this Christmas we have, which we are grateful for, can I tell you something? That it started just because somebody chose to give a gift. And that gift that was given has led to this spiral and this attitude and this culture of what? Gift giving. And what was that gift? It was the gift of Jesus that God gave to us. That's what started it. Because if, if God did not see, oh, glory to God. God chose a gift and says, for the salvation of the world, for the redemption of the world, for the reinstatement of man to the relationship I want to be having with him. I'm going to give this gift. And this gift is what is most precious to me, which is my son. Ah, that's so powerful. Just, just thinking about that enough is enough to bring tears to your eyes. Because when we say, oh, the reckless love, you must understand. Think about it. Think about all the things you have in this world. Think about everything you have in this world. And think about you giving it. Just to beg someone for something. You can't even fathom that I will give everything and beg you. Please take this gift. Please. I ask myself, do you know what I did to earn it? How can I just beg you to give, collect it? But God said, what's most precious to me? My son. I'm going to gift my son. And that gift became the pre most important gift ever. Praise God. So, when we talk about the greatest gift of all, we are talking about the gift of Jesus. And can I tell you something? The gift of Jesus is not just about J-E-S-U-S. -S. It's a never-ending gift. What does that mean? The gift of Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. Is the gift that what keeps on giving. When we talk about the gift of Jesus, think about this scenario. Some of you, you have access to Netflix. You, you subscribe to Netflix, true of us. When you subscribe to Netflix, why do you subscribe to Netflix? Because they have a lot of nice movies. But as you have access to those nice movies, which is great, awesome, important, but there are some movies that are upcoming, that there's a section in Netflix that they say upcoming. So that movie hasn't been released, but because of the access you have, that movie, you will have access to it when it is released. It's similar when we talk about the gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus is not just to come and say, hey, my brother, stop sinning. That's, see, that's one of the things, but it is more than that. The gift of Jesus is more than stop sinning. 
the gift of the sacrifice of Jesus is more than stop sinning. It's more than that. Praise God. So, with the gift of Jesus, the gift of Jesus gives you access. Access to the world, to a world of limitless possibilities. It gives you access. It gives you access. I remember there was a resort that myself and my wife went to. I know some men can go to resorts by themselves. I don't pray for that anointing. When you go for a resort, I go with my wife. It's very important. Yes. Uh -huh. So, we went to a resort. I said, Pastor, so how are you relax? Relax in your home. Shut everybody out. Send everybody every way. Sleep in your house. Put on the gym and sleep. Uh -huh. Praise God. So, we went to a resort. Now, I don't know about you. I know a lot of you are too. When I travel, when I get to a hotel, because hotel food is good. Praise God. It's good. But hotel food can purge. Someone say, ah, but they make it nicely. I agree. The cost can purge your stomach. So, because the cost can purge my stomach, so I would, every time I travel, I always look out for, oh, where's the next supermarket, the next shop, so I can go and buy some things. And why buy I keep it in my fridge? Someone say, uh, Pastor, there's mini bar. Huh, mini bar. That bar is not mini. <laughs> it's not mini at all. It's a big bar. So, that's what I always do. So we got to this resort. So I was already looking, targeting with my geographic location. Ah, where are the supermarkets? I was even about to ask the cab guy. So he said, when he's done, when he drops us, we can come out. Okay. So I said, baby, let's hurry up checking so we can go. I buy, at least I buy one big bottle of Coke, you know, so I can be drinking it, drinking it. Because not that you buy one, every small Coke, they'll call one dollar for you that you don't know. Anyway, let's move on. So we got to this place. We checked in everything great. And... They said, oh, sorry, we forgot to tell you. When you get upstairs, the minibar is free. I said, are you sure? Say yes. I said, please write it down. I want it written that the minibar is free. I don't want any story. So they wrote it. So we got it. Minibar looks nice. I said, minibar is okay, but I still need some things. And we were going out. They said, ah, excuse me, sir, where are you going? I said, I want to go and buy something. They said, ah, sorry, sir. You don't need to go and buy anything. I said, why? You see, all this food, you can see this food. So they had like different stores where they were just, they were just food, like different things. All of them is free. You can take it. I say free. I say, but I didn't pay extra money. I'm not in premiums. They say, no, it's free. They say, in fact, the guy at the desk forgot to tell you, your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner is what? Free. I say, hey? Where did and this breakfast is not all this breakfast of Jekyll Jekyll just, just packs one small thing. It's buffet, and it's all type of food. And nobody's looking at you when you are asking for more. They just uh, more, yes, more, yes, more, yes, more. Extra plates, yes. Anyone you want. Guess what? Once they mentioned that to me, you know what happened to me? My confidence went up. You know why? Any food I see, I just go. Ah, I can take it now. I have confidence. It's so beautiful that the minibar, they refresh it every day. So even if I like, I can pack everything, put it in my box, and say, my minibar is finished. They will refinish everything. <laughs> Why could I do that? I could do that because I was confident based on the information that I got, that anything I needed is available to me. If I ask for a mala in that place, I'm sure they will cook it for me. Because I have unhindered access. That is the, what the gift of Jesus has done for you. The gift of Jesus is not just about salvation. If you need the healing, he has got you back. If you need money, he has got your back. If you need salvation, he has got your back. Whatever you need, you need a child, you need a husband, whatever you need, he has got your back. That is the gift of Jesus. So the gift of Jesus is not just, okay, I'm now saved now, I'm not going to sin. That's too cheap. You can use mind transformation to stop sinning. You can use confession and uh, hypnosis to stop doing some things. How can you chip in our salvation to that? God forbid. The gift of salvation is a complete package. It's a complete package. So, as a child of God, and why is this important? Because you cannot take advantage of what you don't know. You cannot. Imagine I was there, and all the while they were talking to me, I was playing, putting earphones. I would have gone, spent my money, I went to a cab, I would go think about it, I would sweat, do all of that. When I could just sit down and place a call, please. Today I feel like omelette. You will bring it. Anything I want, they will get it for me. 
if, a, if men can plan complete packages such like that, how much more God? How much more God? Sometimes we think that this, this gift of Jesus was done by a man. It wasn't. It's a complete package. So, as a child of God, I want you to know this morning that the gift of Jesus we celebrate is not just a gift of, hey, turn from, from, from bad to good. No, sir. That's okay. That's the first step. But there's more than that. Tell us, your neighbor, say, neighbor, there's more than that. There's more than that. So, what are some of the benefits of the gift of Jesus? The first one is salvation and freedom from sin. See, as someone says, oh, pastor, I've had this sin, this terrible problem. I've been doing this masturbation, this fornication. This See, the way you, sin, you stop sinning is not by saying, I stop sinning. I stop sinning. Eh, eh. It's by accepting what has been done for you. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is now for now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let me tell you the problem with sin. The problem with sin is not the act of sin. The problem with sin is the guilt that comes after. That is why the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation. So, someone says, oh, are you saying that, you know, um, 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 because we are not a Christian, I should sin anyhow? No, that's not what we're saying. But I'm telling you, that God's will for you is to live above condemnation. You know why? When you are condemned, you cannot even seek help. And that is the problem of sin. The problem of sin. See, you need, and see, this thing is very important because sometimes when we t preach and we talk to people that are not Christians like us and born again, you know, there's a way we talk. They cannot understand what you're saying. It's just like when you are saying, oh, when you give your heart to Christ, you are, you are converted from one religion to another religion. Christianity is not a conversion therapy. Let me say it again. Christianity is not conversion therapy. It's not converted. It's also, you are converted from Islam to, Muslim, to Christian. You are converted from atheist to Christian. He are not, conver not converting you. Because it, we keep telling them they are converted. That's why even though they are converted, they still come there. They are still doing everything they used to do. They don't see a difference. And this is why, see, God made human beings to be productive. When you are a human being and you are doing something, you are not seeing results, you will stop it. What is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. They will stop it. That's why we need to furnish them with the right information. So Christianity is not about converting from one religion to another. Christianity is accepting the gift of Jesus that God gave, on, that God gave to us. That is what Christianity is. And when you accept that gift, a very important thing you must do, which a lot of Christians do not do today, sadly, is to enter a personal relationship with Jesus. A lot of us know of Jesus. We don't know him. I know of a lot of you. I can see you. You can see me. I know you're a man. You're a woman. You're wearing hair. You're not wearing hair. Sorry, I don't know who is wearing hair. not wearing hair. Well. But I know like that. But when I talk about someone like Pastor Luke, I know her. We have been together for a long time. I've seen her in different places. We have seen each other in different ways. Brother Ni, Pastor Ni over here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This man, I know him. If you don't know him, I know him. Because where we come from is a way back. I know him. The question this morning is this. Do you know Jesus? So say, Pastor, Jesus knows us. Jesus knows everybody. Even the guy that's going to die and go to hell, he knows them. Because he died for the whole world. But the question is this. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you have a personal relationship with him? I say, what does it mean to know him? It's not just to have an head knowledge. It's to have experiential knowledge. When they say Adam knew Eve, what does that mean? Adam experienced Eve, praise God. He, just, he didn't just know, he experienced her, she experienced him. I don't say they had sex, I don't know. You know, do I would not say that? Experiential knowledge. Do you know him experientially? And if you are going to understand and accept this gift, you need to know what this gift is about. You know what a lot of us have done with the gift of Jesus? We have accepted the gift, but we have left it unwrapped in our homes. We have left him. He's wrapped up. You have left him unpackaged. You have not, you have not brought it down. So, imagine I send a gift to you, all wrapped up, and I say, and I call you, I say, oh, did you get your gift? The way you answer me will let me know whether you've unwrapped the gift or not. 
a lot of you. The reason why you are a Christian, you just walk here defeated, you know, your life is just, you don't know anything. With the masses, with the, you have not unwrapped your gift. Some of you need to go and unwrap your gift. That gift of Jesus to you, you need to go and unwrap it today. And how do you unwrap it? It's by knowing him. See, when you see, ah, I said this in first of I didn't know if to, I would go in there again. Paul, you know Paul. Brother Paul, that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Two-thirds. Some of you, you have never written a book before. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The New Testament is not just English. It is Revelation, Rema. That's what he is, the one that wrote it to. Holy Spirit is the author, but he wrote it. That same guy, when he wanted to die, he said that I may know him. I said, Brother Paul, what are you talking about? How can you write to thought of the New Testament that you have been telling me that you may know him? So what will I do now? That means I'm almost doomed now. I cannot know this God. With all the rema and revelation you had, you still came and said that I may know him. That's why sometimes you must think about the songs you sing. When the song says, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Do you think about it? Or you just sing it, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Can I, can I even tell you something? A lot of us, we are too in a hurry. We are too in a hurry. You know why I say so? Someone comes and say, what's your achievement? I read the whole Bible throughout this year. How is that an achievement? You have the rest of your life to read the Bible. So the fact that you read the Bible completely today is not an achievement. Because the Bible says the race is not to the swift. It passes not to the strong. It is God that shows mercy. You can take one scripture and you get one revelation every three, six, five days for the rest of the, for the whole year. So what are you saying? But we are too in a hurry. You need to settle down with this God. It's just the way single people think sometimes about marriage. You say, when we get married, ah, <laughs> my brother, you have the rest of your life to do it. I say, let's quickly do it. Let's quickly do it now. This is not marriage class. So you have the rest of your life to do it. So, as a child of God, the question this morning is this. Have you unwrapped your gift that God gave you? Have you unwrapped the gift that God gave you? Some of you, you, are, you know what you have done? You know, some of, we do this sometimes. When someone gives us a gift, we'll just open one side and say, ah, it's a cabinet. Ah, it's a laptop. Ah, see, the beauty of Shebra Kadabasha, I hope you get this. The beauty of the gift of Jesus is this, is multifaceted. So just opening one side is not enough to see what the whole package is about. When you open your package a little, you can see, ah, this one mm, is just iron. Ah, I don't need iron. Ah, this one mm, is just drier. I don't need drier. This one, ah, biscuits, cornflakes. No. This side of Jesus, you need to unwrap the whole thing to see what Jesus can do for you. You need to unwrap the whole thing. You need to unwrap the whole thing. This, see, when we talk about the gift of Jesus, it's, it's more than salvation. Salvation is great, but it's more than salvation. There's healing in there. There's healing in there. In that box, in that package that Jesus gave, in that package that God gave to you, there's healing inside. There's finance inside. One of the things that must happen to you when you become a Christian is the assurance you have. A lot of us Christians, we don't have enough conviction. I tell you. See, sometimes you should go and check those, those suicide bombers and go and watch when they are talking. Say yes. They're even smiling. I'm going to heaven. 20 virgins, you know. It's not even about the 20 virgins alone. Is the assurance they have about the 20 virgins. It baffles me. It baffles me. But they came to know something. The question is this, what do you know? What do you know about this Jesus? What do you know about this Jesus? I love the way Pastor used to say it. He said, if you see Jesus as a carpenter, you get furniture. If you see Jesus as a carpenter, you get furniture. Some of us, we see Jesus, you are the mighty man in battle. Well, should I... Is the mighty man in battle, but he's also my father. That is why we can come and say, my father, my father. It's not a cliche. It's based on a revelation. It's based on a knowing. That's why you can say, I've prayed, I've prayed, I've prayed. It's not answer. Which revelation are you praying on? Because we, when we are praying that my father, my father, it is to remind us, the person we are talking to is not one God that cannot be touched. It's not one person somewhere. See, the problem also sometimes is when you say my father, my father, you really think about the father that you had 
I'm sorry. I know that you may not have had a mother or father. So you need to go and check who is a father. A father is a protector. He's a provider. Our God is not a planless God. The way some of us pray sometimes, we pray as if God is planless. Father, you see my problem now. What are you going to do about it? I told him in my church, I said, God is not your therapist. Go and pay a therapist. You want to just talk. God is your father. You come to him, my father. This is the problem. Father, show me the way. Father, show me the way. Because I know you will show me the way. And Pastor B has told us this a lot of times. The people that get their prayers answered are the people that believe that God answers prayers. So, if you fundamentally believe that God doesn't answer your prayer, you will not see prayer answered. And the, one of the worst places you can ever be is to begin to envy and look down on the people that God has answered their prayer. Because if you are not careful, you are becoming an agent of Satan. Because how does the answer prayer stop you now? The problem is this. You think that God is, you know, budget or allocation in Nigeria. You know there's allocation. They've divided it. Everyone, their portion. And once it's finished, it's finished. No, sir. Once it's finishing, we are just starting. Once it's finished, we are just starting. So this gift of Jesus to us is more than just salvation. See, part, salvation is part of it, Yes. Divine health and healing is part of it, yes. But there's also prosperity. Prosperity. Luke chapter 10. Let me show you one other thing that's, that the gift of Jesus gives to us. Luke chapter 10. Oh, glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Luke chapter number 10. I think verse uh, 12. Oh, 19. Luke 10, 19. Bible says... Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's a revelation in that scripture that some of you may not have seen. I hope to show you quickly. The scripture says, I give you power over, every, over all the works of the enemy and it says nothing shall by any means what? Did he, did he say nothing will attempt to hurt you? So when you see the devil attempting to hurt you, why are you afraid? Because he did not say they will not attempt. He said they will not hurt you. It might look as if you almost lose your life, but you will not lose your life. It might look as if you almost lose the child, you will not lose the child. It might look as if you almost lose the testimony, you will not lose it. Because he says nothing shall by any means hurt you. He won't say nothing will hurt you if they won't try. That's why the scripture says, surely they shall gather, but not for my sake. So stop crying that they are gathering against you. You should be happy. You are fulfilling scripture. Praise God. They are gathering against you. Say, ha, ah, glory to Jesus. See scripture fulfilling in my life. They are gathering against me. I can only say that based on revelation. And based on what, who I know my God is. So when we come and we say, my God is good and kind to me, do you understand what that means? And do you believe it? Because one of the things that hinders us from accepting that, what God has done for, what that gift is belief. You know, it's like, Imagine I tell, you know, Pastor Luke over here, I say, oh, Pastor Luke, oh, I, I, I have a car for you. This is the key. She might say, Pastor, you are joking. Pastor, you are joking. Pastor, you are joking. But maybe because she knows me and she believes in my capacity, praise God, she believes I can give her a car. But for some of us, God has given us this gift. You say, no, no, it's a lie. 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 As you keep saying it, but what did the Bible say? All things are possible to him that what? Remember that all things are possible. He didn't say all good things are possible. He said all things. So if it's good, you believe. If it's bad, you believe. So unbelief is one of the reasons why people don't accept this gift. So if, just think about it. Somebody wants to, this partner calls you and says, hey, I'm in front of your house. I'm going to drop something for you. And you tell them, no, 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 no. It's not for me. What would the dispatch man do? You think he would drop it? He will try and convince you. He will say, this is your name, this is your number. This is what... But if he says it's not for you, the dispatch man will take it back. The reason why you, that gift is not working in your life is because you have not accepted it. When you accept it, it begins to work in your life. When you accept it, it begins to what? Work in your life. 
So, what's another hindrance? Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. See, the gospel is good news. It's not a gospel of condemnation. We don't preach. See, this is why unbelievers are un, don't understand us. Because we say the gospel is good news. Then we tell them, if you don't do this, you'll go to hell. How is that good news? This is why unbelievers do not understand us. Pastor, you're saying that if someone does wrong, they will, not go, they, can, they, will, they will go to hell. But that is not what the gospel is. The gospel is not, I've told you before, it's not conversion therapy. It's come to accept what has been done for you. Why do people go to hell? People don't go to hell because of what they do. People go to hell because of what they did not do. Let it sink. So they, he killed. Uh -uh. You've not seen other people that are killed and are not casting out demons. If defrauded, you've not seen other people that did that and they are now raising the dead. People don't go to hell for what they do. They go to hell for what they did not do. What did they do? They did not accept the sacrifice of Jesus that was given. So, every time you want to preach somebody, uh, Sholakwe, you have been sleeping around. You have been sleeping around. My, brother, my sister, if she knew how to do better, she would know. if she knew better, she would do better. What you should tell her is that, see, Sholakwe, I know that you may be down and out, but there is someone I want you to meet. That if you enter a relationship with that person, that person can change your life. See, we are not the ones to change people's life. We are the ones to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Who are we? We are referrers. We need to refer sinners to Jesus. That is what we, our job is. We are referrers. We are, not, we are not judge. We are referrers. We refer people to Jesus. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I need to round up now. How do I access God's gift to me? You need to be born again. Acts 2 verse 21. Acts 2 verse 21. Acts 2 verse 21. You need to be born again. What does the Bible say? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is why you can be saved and not have a personal relationship with Jesus. Because salvation requires you to call on Jesus and believe what he did for you. Salvation did not say you must be Jesus' best friend. Salvation did not say you must be Jesus' best friend. Salvation says accept what Jesus did for you. Accepting what he did for you is one step, but you must enter a relationship with him. And into that relationship, you want to get to know him better. And know him personally. Praise God. Praise God. So, all of God's gifts are embedded in the saving power of Jesus. One of the things that salvation does for us, it gives us access. Hi. It gives us access. It gives us access. Think of salvation like the master key. And you have a hotel room full of, or a house full of different rooms. But with this one key, if you are looking for the room of health, you can enter. If you, are, you see, you don't need any other key. You know the problem, eh? We have told people that you need Jesus plus something. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. You don't need to say Jesus. But no, Jesus is enough. Oh, I love that song. It says, Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything. Everything. Just accept Christ. I did not say accept Christ, your problem will end. No, but accept him so that you can begin the journey. Because it is a journey. Are you going to stop that habit? You may not stop it immediately. But I can assure you, enter that relationship with him. Focus on him, not that problem. You will not know when you break that addiction. Ask all the people that broke addiction. They cannot tell you when they broke it. Why? Because they found out that they left it because they began to focus on their relationship with Jesus. That's why Apostle Paul said, that I may know. Hey! He said, that thing baffles me. That I may know. Say, what, so what do I, that means, me, I've not even started K. He said, that he may know. I've not even started. And that's why the psalmist can say, uh, as the songwriter can say, the more I know you is the more I want to know you. Think of Jesus like an onion. 
that you peel, you never, there's no ending. You peel, ah, ah, fresh. You peel, fresh. You peel, he keeps going, he keeps going. That is how a life with Jesus is. So say, ah, I've tried this Jesus thing. My brother, you did not try it too. Because anybody that starts with Jesus cannot go back. You didn't too. I can tell you scripturally, anyone that starts with Jesus, you cannot go back. So when you say, I tried it, uh-uh, there was something wrong in the approach you took. Because when you know him, you will say, hey, I don't even know anything yet. Salvation, the first one. The second one is knowledge. The second one is knowledge. How do you take advantage of all this gift? Knowledge. You must know that you have a gift. You must know that this gift, you don't beg. You don't beg. This gift is given. Oh, glory to God. This gift is given. Jesus is given. Jesus is given. You don't beg. Say, God, God, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, if you can just do it. No, oh, stop it. Stop it. When you are, when you are going, you are begging, begging. Just say, ah, I've given you all things now. Why are you begging? Say, but pastor, I don't have it. Because you have to step into it. There's a difference between begging and obtaining. There's a difference between begging and obtaining. Scripture says, come boldly onto the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. Did he say beg for mercy? He say obtain it. If mercy is there, come into and collect. Even in the harshest of boarding houses, when you get to, it's time for lunch. As long as you're a student, you have a match, everything, you wear your uniform, when you go, they give you food. You don't beg. You've paid your dues already. They give you food. So, you come and you what? Obtain. And then the third one is faith. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Let me tell you what that means. God Almighty looked at us, looked at this world, coronavirus, economic murder. He looked at 2021, 2019, 2018, 2023, 2017, 2025, 2019, 2019, for those that will live till then, to 21,000. He looked at all of it and he said, hey, the just shall live in this world by faith because he saw everything before he came. That is why you must build up your faith. You must. You must. Sunday service is not enough. You need to go deeper now. You need to go deeper now. Prayer, NLP is great. Join us. But it's not enough. You need to go deeper now. Jesus is the greatest gift of all. Is the gift that keeps on giving. Is the gift that keeps on giving. And I want to encourage you, in this Christmas period, while we relax, while we wear Christmas clothes, Christmas shoes, Christmas party, can you reflect and ask yourself a simple question? This gift of Jesus that has been given, have I unwrapped it? Or I am still looking at just a part and making up my mind that Jesus only answers prayer when it comes to health. When it comes to marriage, it doesn't fix that. Says who? Jesus is a is complete package. Is complete package. Is complete package. Because if you unwrap it, and how do you unwrap it? By getting to know him more. By getting to know him more. By getting to know him more. This morning, I want to invite you to unwrap the gift that God gave you for Christmas. That gift that God gave all of us that started this season of gift giving. And that's the gift of Jesus. Unwrap your gift today and see the world of limitless possibilities available for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed today? Awesome. Can we celebrate Jesus? Praise God. Praise Jesus.